Hey, I'm Shiloh with D20 Academy, and this is the first episode in this series with good lighting. Welcome to part three of D20 Academy's complete comprehensive guide to Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars role playing game. Today we'll be talking about gear and equipment. In part one, we talked about the basics of the system and the dice mechanics, and in part two, we talked about character creation. So go check those out if you haven't already. Now, if you want to see this exciting system in action, uh, go ahead and check out our brand new Star Wars actual play series on our podcast called Friends Like These, which is out now. There are two episodes out now already. You can go ahead and listen to that here on YouTube or anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a good time. And there's still more episodes to come. Okay, so since it's going to be a pretty long episode with lots of detail, let's just jump right in. I'll try to make this as simple as possible. Let's talk about rarity first and foremost. Okay, so all items have a rarity ranging from 1 to 10. 1 being common and 10 being extremely rare. And if at any time a player wants to purchase an item and the GM is not sure if they would actually be able to find that item for purchase, wherever they are, they can go ahead and have the player make a check. The check can either be a negotiation check or a, an appropriate knowledge check, depending on what the GM decides. And this check is rolled against a difficulty determined by the item's rarity. There is a table for this check uh, in every single core rulebook. Um, the page numbers are down below me here. However, what, before you make this check, the rarity may be influenced by a certain number of factors. For example, the rarity may um, decrease if you are shopping in a core world or like a trading port, or the rarity may increase for this check if you're in an outer rim world or like a frontier planet. There's also a table for this, and the page number on each of the core rulebooks is right here. All right, now let's talk about encumbrance. Um, each item has an encumbrance rating ranging from 0 to 5, 0 being very light and or small, 5 being very large and or heavy. Now, a weapon's encumbrance is not exactly weight, it's more of an abstract representation of the item, how heavy it is and how hard it is to carry and its bulk. Characters track their bulk, which is the total encumbrance rating of all the items they are carrying. Characters also have an encumbrance threshold, which is 5 plus their brawn. If their bulk ever exceeds their threshold, then they add a setback dice, one of those black dice, to each brawn and agility roll they make for each point of bulk above their encumbrance threshold. So if their encumbrance threshold is 7 and their bulk is 9, they add two setback dice to each brawn and agility roll. Keep in mind that some items' encumbrance uh, can change depending. So for example, if you're wearing armor, decrease the encumbrance by 3 um, rather than if you were just carrying it. If a character is encumbered by an amount equal to their brawn, then they lose their free maneuver each turn. And we'll talk about what all of that means in the next part of this series. One thing I really like about this system is item maintenance. The fact that items can be damaged or broken and that you can like repair them or replace them. An item can be damaged up to three steps. The first step is minor, the second step is moderate, and the third step is major. If using an item that is damaged, you add one setback dice if it is damaged uh, one step, you add a difficulty dice if it is damaged two steps, and the item is actually unusable if it is damaged three steps. If a user wishes to repair an item, they must buy materials uh, depending on the uh, amount of damage that the item has taken. So if, you, if the item is just minorly damaged, it's just damaged one step, then the material cost is 25% of the item's base cost. If it's moderately damaged, then it's 50% of the item's base cost. And if it's majorly damaged, it's 100% of the item's base cost. After buying materials, it then must make a mechanics check. An easy check for minor repairs, average check for moderate repairs, hard check for major repairs. Without the proper tools to repair something, increase the difficulty by one. Now, repairing typically takes one to two hours per difficulty level, and if a character wants to repair something faster, increase the difficulty by one. Each advantage made on this mechanics check can decrease the material cost by 10%. And if the check is successful, the weapon or item is successfully repaired. All right, let's talk about weapons, and each weapon has a number of characteristics that make up that weapon. The first is the weapon's name, you know, the name of the weapon, uh, and then the skill it uses, and then the weapon's base damage, the weapon's range, the weapon's critical rating, the encumbrance, 
the rarity, the cost, the hard points, and the qualities. So for the weapons skill used characteristic, let's real quick talk about combat skills. Now, of course, we're talking about more about combat in the next part of this series. But real quick, know that there are six different combat skills in this game. Melee, Brawl, Lightsaber, Ranged Light, Ranged Heavy, and Gunnery. Each weapon has a skill used characteristic, which dictates what skill you use to attack with that weapon. So brass knuckles would be brawl, uh, knives and swords would be melee, lightsabers would obviously be lightsaber, um, blaster pistols would typically be ranged light, blaster rifles would be ranged heavy, and then turrets, cannons, um, guns on ships use gunnery. Now, let's talk about combat real quick. I'll get way deeper into combat in the next part, but I need to explain some basics so that um, item characteristics make sense. When making an attack, the attacker uses the appropriate combat skill listed for the weapon, as I just explained. But they can only make the attack if the target is within the weapon's range, which is either engaged, which is adjacent, uh, short range, medium, long, or extreme. Once again, get into all of this in the next part. If successful, the attack deals damage equal to the weapon's base damage, and possibly more depending on the role and different talents and qualities and things like that. This damage is reduced by the target's soak. If the attack hits, characters can also spend advantages to crit, to score a critical hit, and the amount of advantages they need to spend to score a crit is equal to the weapon's critical rating. Hard points, or HP, is essentially the amount of attachments a weapon can hold, but I'll talk more about this later on in this episode. Items, and mostly weapons, may also have any number of qualities. If the qualities are passive, it means that they're always working, right? They're always on. But if the qualities are active, it means they require to be activated. And typically this requires spending two advantages to activate that quality, though some specify if it takes more or less than two advantages to activate. There are a lot of qualities, and I can't cover them all in this episode. Um, most are straightforward and simple, but if you do have some questions on the more confusing ones, you can look them up and typically you can find the answers to them on forums. Um, or you can comment on this video and I will get back to you as soon as possible with an answer to your question. Know that qualities are what makes uh, an item and typically a weapon really unique. Um, they can cause status effects like staggering opponents and mobilizing them, they can set people on fire, they can cause explosions, they can stun people, all that kind of juicy stuff. And, and qualities are really what makes um, weapons in combat like really, really exciting. Now let's talk about armor, and armor typically gives the wearer two things, a bonus to soak and or a bonus to defense. Some also have some special rules or qualities, but those are specified on the armor type. When wearing armor, you can add the armor soak value to your brawn to get your character's soak. And remember, whenever you take damage, you reduce it by your soak. You also gain defense in both your melee and range defense, depending on the armor's defense rating. We'll talk more about soak and defense and how that all works in part four when we talk about combat. But for now, that's what you need to know about armor. All right, let's talk about gear, which is all the other stuff your character has. Um, their uh, communication devices, their backpacks, their equipment belts, um, their glow rods, all that kind of stuff. That's all gear and it's pretty self-explanatory um, there. One thing to note though is about cybernetics and cybernetics are robotic enhancements um, characters can add to their bodies, such as getting a cybernetic robotic arm to make them stronger, or a brain implant, or cybernetic eyes. And to know that a character can only have a number of cybernetics equal to their brawn rating. The only exception is droid characters who can have up to six cybernetics. If a character, say, loses an arm in battle and needs a cybernetic replacement, but they've already met their cybernetic cap, they'll just have to settle for a prosthetic one. All right, now let's talk about the really fun stuff, which are attachments and characters can buy attachments and equip them to their gear to make them more powerful and unique and interesting. All attachments have a cost and a rarity as normal, um, and all specify what they attach to, whether armor or a weapon or whatever it is. Each attachment has a hard point value, typically one, and each item can hold a number of attachments with a total number of hard points, which is the item's hard point value. So if you have a blaster that has um, three hard points, then you can uh, attach a number of attachments onto it where the total number of hard points is three. Now, some attachments also have modification options which can make them even better. To install a mod in an attachment, the user chooses one uninstalled modification 
for that attachment. They then spend 100 credits on the supplies and take a few hours to attempt to install the mod, requiring a hard mechanics check. If they succeed, the mod is successfully installed on the attachment, but failing means that they can't install that mod again. For each modification installed on the attachment above the first, it costs an additional 100 credits and increases the difficulty of the check by one. So if you want to install your first modification on attachment, it just costs 100 credits and just a hard mechanics check. If you want to install a second modification on that attachment, it costs 200 credits and requires a daunting mechanics check. And if you want to install a third modification on that attachment, it's 300 credits and a formidable mechanics check. That does it for this part of this series. The next part will be on conflict and combat, all that kind of stuff. Um, so stay tuned for that. Remember to look out for Friends Like These, our Star Wars actual play series. Once again, two sessions are out now here on YouTube, on our podcast, wherever you find it. Follow us on Instagram to get updates about what's going on here at D20 underscore Academy. Listen to our podcast. It's a lot of fun. And if you are a game master looking to build your own campaign, maybe it's in this really cool Star Wars system, head over to d20academy.com. I have a free video for you there that takes you through the process of building your own homebrew campaign. Until next time, may the force be with you.